Hello, in this session of LT, the topics to be covered as video over LT and voice over LT. So these are the features of LT Advanced. Video over LT or voice over LT are the features of LT Advanced in which we are transmitting voice and simultaneously video through IMS network. In the previous class of LT, we had discussed about circuit switched fallback, which is there in LT. But advanced feature that means sending voice over the IP network, that means IMS network, is a feature of LT advanced. Now, I, IMS as IP multimedia services. So, in this IP multimedia services, it means that we are transmitting my voice by converting with IP address. That means this is my voice over internet protocol. But in this, we have voice over IMS network, which is there for IP connectivity. So, we have voice over LT in which we are transmitting voice in a LT network. So, as LT is totally packet switch network, basic architecture of LT is totally packet switched. Now, we want voice. So, we can't send voice over the circuit switch network because this is an advanced feature. So, we will last voice on an IP address and then transmit. That means, this is a feature of voice over IP. In, for this, we are using a different network that means the IMS network for IP conversions. So, voice over LT. That means, voice will be converted as a packet data. So, my voice will be treated as my packet data for transmission through IMS network. Now, what about the network architecture of IMS? So, the network architecture of IMS has units like Very first unit is IP CAN. Then we have PCSCF. ICSCF. SCSCF. Connected to AS. And HSS. So these are the unit which is there in IMS network. So, this is the basic architecture of IMS network and these are the basic entities. Now, let's start from the very first. That means, what is this IP CAN? Now, IP CAN is internet protocol. Connectivity. Access. Network. IP CAN is connectivity IP network or I can say connectivity access network. What is IP CAN? IP CAN is basically radio access network and MME of LT. So that means this unit is my LT, E node B and MME part. Because here is the user, so user is connected to IP CAN. That means the first interface to the user is provided by IP CAN. Now we have call, state, control, function. Control function 
and last one is s where s s stands for serving control function this one is my my server which is application server and hs is as being the same as home station sub now okay user user want to use i ims network so i can say that this fully is my ims network is proxy call state control function deals with security purpose now it deal as it deals with security that means the very first function is authentication first p cscf will authenticate the user that means valid it is a valid user or not and it will activate a pdcp pdcp is packet data convergence protocol as this pdcp protocol is basically for packet data conversion for transmission of packet data so very fast that means ip can network E node B and MME will contact PCSCF. Now it will authenticate, provide security, and activate the PDCP. That means for packet data, it is required to be activated here. Now let's move to the next part. That means interrogate. Now interrogating CSCF will do. will allocate a proper dns dns as domain name server that means interrogating will give me ip in dns particular ip address in our domain name server and after that we can move to the serving serving cscf now it will validate ip addresses of the users now after we have proxy interrogating and serving that means we have authenticate ourselves we have ip in dns now ip addresses of the user they have saved simultaneously hss is as per the location of the users now comes the main that means the application server now application server is the main unit application server is the main unit which is there that means for controlling which is there for controlling all the ip addresses controlling our all ip addresses and codex values like our ims supports ipv Four to Internet Protocol version six, and they are using codec. That means voice codec. We require proper codec to code our voice and to transmit it. So we are using the same voice codec as we are using GSM and UMTS. That means. voice codec now voice codec that we are used in lt is same as that of gsm and umts and similarly i can say that this is same in lt and the voice codec which we are using in this 
is AMR codec. This codec is used for working wherever we want to transmit it. So AMR is adaptive multi rate codec. Now this adaptive multi rate codec is used for coding of voice. So now for voice over LTE, voice over LTE, we are using the same codec as we have used in GSM and UMS networks for voice. Now comes application server will find out the address where we want to transmit our voice. So that address is in the GSM. So, RP converter of voice in the packet data and transmit directly to the users with the help of EV and MME. Now, we require a protocol for this voice over LTE. And this protocol, IMS uses IETF Internet Engineering Task Force protocols. protocols for this and the protocol which we have used is SIP where SIP is session initialization or initiation protocol session initiation protocol SIP protocol now application server has a name also of transmitting SIP also, which is, which is there who is controlling my whole IMS network for voice. And this session initiation protocol is used for controlling, controlling voice in IMS network. So it supports IPv4 to IPv6, all IP addresses with AMR codec that we had used in the previous generations. Now we have a function in this, and that function is SRV double C. SRV double C is signal. Radio, radio, voice, call, continuity. A single radio voice call continuity. As I'm depicting that, it is there for continuity of voice call. As for voice call, I have two provisions. Like it could be now packet switch and this could be circuit switch. So I have a CRBCC function. That means if in any case I require handover from PS voice call to circuit switch voice call, it should be possible. And why it is possible? It is possible to have call continuity and it should not have call drops. That means the SRVCC function is there for handovers from packet switched voice call to circuit switched voice call. So that we have a seamless manner of handover call continuity seamless without breakage with drops we are having our call and that is totally seamless call if we had used SOVCC function in any case we require handover from packet switch first call to the circuit switch that means again circuit switch fallback provision we can have this option also and this is my CRVC function now next topic,
which is video over LG. Now video over LG. That means transmitting video. Or oh, video means video calling. Now we have video calling feature in 3G also. But we want high quality. Less latency. That's why we require to focus on video over LG. So for video over LT, we require codecs. Video over LT uses the same IMS network. That means video over LT uses the same IMS network. This video calling feature uses the same protocol, which is the session in session protocol, SIP protocol for video controlling, video calling controlling. It is using the same IMS network. The difference is in the codec. Because the codec used in 3G is codec for video. We are using the same codec for voice, but it is using 324M codec for video in 3G, whereas for video codec in LG. We are using a different codec and which is 8H.264 codec. And the help of this codec, it is possible to have high quality video calling as compared to the 3G cellular system with less latency. So this is our video or LG difference as compared to voice or LG. Same IMS name. Same protocol, but in this codex are different voices and videos. So, we in today's class we have discussed about voice over LT and video over LT. This is all for today. Thank you so much.